Well, we want to wish you a good Friday morning. <laughs> you made I it to the you were end of the week. We like wished you. <laughs> No, that's I in a couple you're weeks. Into song. We'll, we'll break out into Ooh. song in a few weeks. It's uh, we haven't got the Christmas tree here at uh, the Care Eleven Studio just yet. You think we'll be getting one this year? Hopefully. I don't Fingers know. Fingers crossed. We were good this year. We were good. <laughs> Sandy even told us in one of the Some mall. more than others. Some yeah, more than others. That's true. Well, let's check in with our goody two shoes, Guy Brown. <laughs> I was nice this year. Yes, exactly. So now uh, I don't have goody two shoe weather in the forecast this evening. I have a messy commute on the way this evening. Now this morning we're quiet. So if you have any errands to run, maybe. Maybe you had plans to go uh, do certain things, maybe some holiday shopping. I would maybe go earlier, the better. Snow on the way this evening, quiet this morning. More on the snow. I'll let you know timing and how much you can expect coming up here in just a bit. Yeah, sounds like the evening commute not going to not going to be ideal, but the morning commutes off to a decent start, which is great. If you have anywhere to be early this Friday morning, we are just tracking one single issue. You can see the icon there, a stalled vehicle over in the eastern suburbs of 94 494. Oops, we'll go show you the traffic camera. There you go. 494 Tamarack Road. You see it blocking the right shoulder, causing just a minor slowdown for folks in that area. This morning, we're learning more about what happened to a 17 year old shot and killed in Brooklyn Park two weeks ago. Right now, two teens are in custody and they're still looking for a third. Police say they believe that they used ghost guns, which are what they think the suspects used to kill Sioka Siko. And ghost guns are assembled at home using unserialized handgun parts ordered online and bought under fake names. Meanwhile, gun violence is becoming a growing epidemic in the Twin Cities, and people want answers. Jennifer is joining us with what the community is doing to try to stop the violence. Yeah, Alicia, Chris, they do want answers, and a lot of the discussion about what's happening is centered on gangs and social media. Several teens have lost their lives to gun violence since the beginning of the year. Here are some of them. That violence is what prompted a conversation in Brooklyn Park last night. Held at Ebenezer Community Church, the panel made up of teens, law enforcement, and mental health experts focused on why this violence is happening. Here's clinical counselor Dr. Aja King. They are searching high and low for their identity. Gang violence does not equal a broken family. But when they are with their friends, it's a different ball game. The discussion at Ebenezer Community Church is just one of many they have planned. As we noted, there were also teens and police on that panel, and they addressed what is causing some of these incidents to escalate to these shootings. There are three things they point to. We're going to get into that in just 30 minutes, Chris. All right, look forward to that. Thanks, Jen. New this morning, a dad from Burnsville chases down a suspect that stole his SUV with his kids inside it. These are pictures of the aftermath Wednesday near Penn and Plymouth Avenues in Minneapolis. Police say the dad got out of the vehicle and that's when the suspect got in and drove off. According to their report, the dad saw the suspect's stolen vehicle nearby, got in that and chased them down, rear ending his own vehicle. The suspect ran off, leaving the kids. No one was hurt and police have not made any arrests. Meanwhile, Minneapolis police are releasing new numbers they say are positive results in their public safety strategy called Operation Endeavor. They are about two months into the operation. Compared to the same time period in 2021, they say gun-related crimes, carjackings and robberies all decreased, and violent crime from last month to this month is also down. Well, thousands of Minnesota nurses will go on strike for a second time at 17 hospitals statewide. The Minnesota Nurses Association says if an agreement isn't reached, the strike would start on December 11th. For Twin Cities and Essentia Health, the strike would last three weeks, ending the 31st. Nurses at St. Luke's in Duluth and Lakeview and Two Harbors intend to strike with no end date in sight. Union leaders say negotiations have lasted nearly nine months and hospital staffing levels remain a sticking point. We keep coming back day after day to the same horrific staffing. At the negotiation table, their answers remain unchanged. They do not want nurses involved in the decision-making process. This comes about three months after nurses statewide held the three-day strike. At the time, they wanted a 30% raise spread over three years. They are now down to asking for 20%, with some hospitals offering closer to 13%. And the hospitals that would be affected by the strike are responding. Officials at Children's Minnesota say they are preparing for if a strike happens. Their biggest concern is for the children in their care. The reality is that in a setting of a work stoppage, the critically ill children in particular will need to be transferred to other hospitals 
outside of Minnesota to neighboring states. Children's Minnesota also says the timing of the potential strike is a huge concern with RSV a serious issue right now. We also have statements from many other hospital groups that would be impacted and you can read them right now at care11.com. As a possible 20 day nurse strike looms, Minnesota has seen a surge in flu cases. The Minnesota Department of Health says 355 people were hospitalized last week alone due to the virus. State health officials say more than 1,100 people statewide have required inpatient care so far. That's compared to 901 total last flu season. Today, the CDC says the flu spread in Minnesota is high right now. Currently, there are 19 flu related deaths. In just a few hours, Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Bry will be signing an executive order to protect gender affirming care. The order will allow minors living apart from their parents to make their own health care decisions related to gender. It also protects access to gender affirming services, supplies and drug therapies and stops the government from blocking that care or taking action against care providers. New funding from the state is helping families get more access to affordable child care. Governor Walls just announced nearly $2.5 million in grants, funding, and it's headed to 17 child care organizations across the state. The governor said his administration often hears that a lack of quality child care is one of the major hurdles preventing workforce growth. This funding is a key strategy in fixing that. The money will go towards helping child care startups or expansions, training, and to provide incentives to retain employees. Just across the border in St. Croix Falls is a holiday wonderland that's as close to a Hallmark movie experience as you can get. Yes, it's called Miracle at Big Rock and you're about to see why the name is fitting. More than 15 million Christmas lights are glowing across a mile long trail that you can walk through or drive through. You can also spend hours exploring the grounds while listening to carolers and live entertainments. No matter where you roam, you'll likely find fire dancers, still walkers, and even a glimpse of Santa. I try to tell people it's like a feeling when you get here. It's like magic, right? It's, it's, it's just this feeling when you walk, it puts you in the Christmas spirit. That's Executive Director Becky Lindblom, whose family started this holiday event. The idea was to make a miracle a cross between Disney World and a Hallmark movie. This year, the family is literally giving guests the moon. The moon is a 14 foot around uh, hand painted canvas that actually came from the Guthrie Theater. It was a, a prop for a play there that we stumbled upon. It's backlighted and it people are taking pictures in front of it and it looks like a silhouette kind of with your picture. That's a great spot to propose. Looks like the experiences only get more Norman Rockwell-esque with sledding, wagon rides, cookie decorating and crafts for your kiddos. You definitely won't go hungry and there's food trucks. They have cocktails, hot drinks throughout the entire trail. And it happens each Friday. They have fireworks capping the night as well. Looks pretty cool. Oh, great. I know, right? There's more merriment than meets the eye. The folks at Big Rock Creek, they're giving back to families too. Yeah, this Monday, guests who bring a new and unwrapped toy will get free entry. Those toys will go to Safe Haven Foster Shop in Lindstrom. We've got ticket information and more on our website, care11.com slash sunrise. St. Croix Falls is right by Osceola where I grew up. Never, I've never seen this or heard of this and now we all know and Now's can experience chance. it, guy. It's yes. a great spot. Now we know. All right, snow on the way this evening. So heads up, we have a lot of watches and uh, advisories as well. We have wind advisories, winter weather advisories, north and west. So let's get right to it. Some slick spots possible this evening and reduced visibility due to wind gusts possibly up to 50 miles per hour right here in the metro. Now, a wind advisory will go in effect at 6, expire tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. We're quiet this morning, so any plans that you may have, get them done before that quick snow just moves in. 21 is to feel like on the skin. Southeast winds right now will only increase, shifting more west. You'll see by 5 o'clock is when we could start to see some snow develop between 5 and 8. Then we're left behind with wind and cold temperatures after a relatively warm day. I mean, average highs well below average today. You'll see average uh, highs in the mid 30s. We're climbing to the 40s this afternoon, but again, that warm air short lived. So some PM blowing snow, cold again on Saturday, Sunday, sunny, rebounding to temperatures in the upper 20s. Coming up next in my seven day forecast, just kind of a recap. If you're just joining us, I'll be timing out 
that snow on the way this evening, an inch or less expected. So, I mean, this is not going to be a big accumulating event, but enough again to slow traffic down. So a period of light snow late this afternoon into the evening. Strong winds through the night. They will be gusty and wind chills tonight and early tomorrow morning. Sub zero as low as 11 below and even outlying areas could even be colder than that. So stick with us throughout the course of the morning. That's all coming up in my seven day forecast and I'll be timing out that snow this evening with microcast here coming up. Thank you guys. Still ahead, we're checking in with Cece, who's live this morning from the St. Paul River Center. Yeah, she's giving us a first-hand look at this year's winter sports show that's coming up at 616. But first, Iowa is about to be replaced as first in the nation for the 2024 elections. We'll tell you which states are in the running to claim the early primary spot. Plus, the world of college football is about to change how the playoffs will be expanding in the next few years. That story at 616. Yeah, Iowa really blew that one. I mean, what are they going to be known for now? Corn? Corn. Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. In this Minnesota home. Look at that. Not a dull moment. I would say at least a million. What? A million pencils? <laughs> Finding potential in pencils. Hey, Lucas, thank you, buddy. Monday at 10 in the land of 10,000 stories.